everyone, welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. I am starting this on Wednesday evening at 10 p.m. I have not intentionally, but I have procrastinated starting this vlog because I keep thinking that my evenings will be calm, serene, full of reading and coziness. It's not the case. <laughs> Every evening so far I've ended up working on different things for far longer than I've expected to. I don't know if I've ever actually mentioned it before but booktube for me is technically another job on top of my normal job so I go from doing a full day of work and just continue on into booktube related stuff. Now usually it's not too bad and I do have a balance but I have a lot of big admin things to sort out this week and it's all been pretty sudden so I've been working on that this evening particularly but at the same time I'm getting quite excited about it now that it's all coming together because it's just little bits and bobs that make me feel more put together. I don't know it's just really satisfying to see it all come together so I haven't really been doing too much because it's just been work and more work and more work. Um, I did manage to start reading a book though. I have started reading The Barn Houses by Emily Lloyd-Jones. I have taken the dust jacket off but I'm only about 70 pages into this, 66 pages into this, but already I'm really enjoying this. So this is a young adult fantasy book which I've had my eye on for the longest time and it's actually my Patreon book club read for September and October so that's exciting but this fantasy centres around gravediggers. So the main character in this is from a family of gravediggers and part of their job is to actually keep the corpses in the ground because they can get up and start walking around again and when they do so they're called bone houses. Now a stranger enters the village and lo and behold more bone houses start coming back and start threatening the village. There is also the underlying problem of how most of the village don't actually believe that the bone houses exist because they no longer believe in magic. So even though our main character is quite often fighting back the bone houses, the villagers just think that she is making it up. Even though she brings them evidence of the corpses, they don't really believe her because she works as a grave digger so she can just get corpses from anywhere. There's something about the writing style in this which I really like and I can't quite pinpoint it. I have noticed that the relationship between some of the characters feels really authentic because the main character has a brother and sister and it's just like a really tight knit unit which has just enough like annoyance but love to actually feel like a sibling relationship and the sarcasm is definitely there which is very much my sort of humour and it definitely does already feel like a very small tight-knit community which I was really quite surprised about because it usually takes me quite a while to believe that a more secluded village is quite as secluded as it's making out but I can completely believe it in this. That being said I do just want to mention one fault with this book which isn't something I would have picked up on but I did see it in Rhiannon's review of it at Welsh Reader. So this fantasy book does actually have a lot of Welsh mythology inspirations and it doesn't advertise that which I found really bizarre because that's such a selling point right now that you would usually push that on people but there was no mention of it but this is actually very largely inspired by it and Rhiannon as you can probably guess from her channel title being Welsh Reader is Welsh. <laughs> and she did a review of this a little while back which I found really interesting because she points out how the author didn't really do enough research when it came to actually using Welsh names and Welsh words because she would just use them wrong or in the wrong context and ultimately make it not make sense if you know Welsh. So it ended up being more a case of random Welsh words being thrown in to appear Welsh rather than actually doing more of a deep dive and using it properly. So I'm going to leave a link to the video where Rhiannon does review this book down below because she does give examples and she explains it far better than I ever could so that is something I'm definitely keeping in mind because I'm very much somebody who would run away with it and be like oh my god mythology inspirations but I don't know too much about Welsh mythology so I'm taking Rhiannon's word for it. <laughs> that being said I am really enjoying the story so far. Only 60 pages in I am hoping I can read maybe 100 pages tonight but I'm not quite sure. It depends how sleepy I end up being because I'm just about to have a bath and I'm hoping that will wake me up enough to actually read something tonight because I didn't last night and I missed it. So definitely want to get back to this book, very eager to read it. I am so thankful that my patrons actually chose this one because it was one that I was excited to get to but at the same time I was never quite prioritising it so my patrons making me read this was a great move so thanks guys. <laughs> That being said, I am going to go and jump in the bath and then get cozy and 
finally do some reading. <laughs> Friday night. <laughs> Again, I would be so bad at vlogging this week. I've just had so much to do. But I just wanted to pop in quickly and say that I haven't done too much reading, which is such a shame because I wanted to do a lot of reading this week, but it doesn't always work out how you want it to. But I am hoping to finish The Bone Houses by Sunday. Tomorrow I'm hoping to have a really creative day of making Instagram content, both photos and reels and also making the thumbnails for my videos because I now have a whole bunch of those ready to go up until I need to do my TBR. So I just need to actually set them up with thumbnails and description boxes and such and they will be fine. So yes, tomorrow will hopefully be a day of creativity. I really want to have a lot of stuff prepared. I just like being ready in advance. <laughs> I do also have my Patreon live show tomorrow night, so that's quite exciting. I really love doing them. It's just like a nice cozy catch up with friends. So looking forward to that. Although I do need to remember that I'm actually doing it because it was meant to be next weekend. I don't actually know what I'm doing next weekend now. So I just brought it forward quite last minute and uh, yeah, it's all been a bit up in the air this week. There's been a lot going on, but I'm hoping things will feel a little more calm and collected over the weekend. I don't have too much to update on at the moment, but I do have a few books to show you tomorrow because I've actually been sent some from publishers. So I'll show you those when it's actually daylight and not this weird lighting from the bedside table lamp. But in the meantime, I am going to read some more of The Burn Houses and hopefully read at least 50 pages. I feel like I'm still very much in the mindset of thinking I can read 100 pages every single day because I used to do that all the time. I'm averaging at like 60 for the past year and my brain just won't accept that that might just be my new normal. <laughs> I refuse. I want to get back to reading 100 pages a day. I mean it will probably have to happen when I'm back at uni because studying literature but yeah I just want to get more back into the habit of reading like little and often because I'm not very good at just sitting down for hours and reading I have to like pick it up here and there like 20 pages at a time maybe rather than leaving it all until now when it's very late in the evening and I get sleepy and inevitably don't read that much so that's another thing I'm currently working on at the minute. <laughs> actually read more so that I have more content. So I'm going to go and curl up and do just that. <laughs> basically not wasted my morning because I have actually filmed a lot for various different things but I wanted to be a little bit further on because I do have some time frames that I'm working with today. It's currently half 11 I'm just about to pop out to a post box. <laughs> I need to post a thing so I'm going to go on a short walk to go and do that. Then I'm going to come home, 
possibly make slow cooker food. I should have made it this morning, but I just completely forgot. So luckily I do still have some time to set that going. And then hopefully spend the afternoon doing some photos, some reels. I think I do have a thing on Zoom at three that I'll need to work around. And then as I mentioned last night, I do have my Patreon live show this evening. So I'll be fitting everything in around those, but I'm feeling good. I'm feeling motivated. I just have been procrastinating slightly. So we're gonna change that now. finished doing my Patreon live show an hour ago maybe, probably just under an hour ago and haven't done too much reading because I randomly ended up feeling ill <laughs> for like for a couple of hours and like the sickness feeling has gone but my body is just generally acting up tonight it seems um, and giving me a bit of grief so I'm feeling pretty restless right now which is making it hard for me to want to sit down and read I want to keep moving because my legs hurt but I did have a small nap before my live show to try and alleviate some of that and it did actually work in terms of I don't feel sick anymore but um, it now means I'm wide awake at 11.30 or as wide awake as my body will allow <laughs> so I'm going to do some general organisation and see if I can settle down to read it all, get my makeup off my face because I've been wearing this for a long time and I've been on camera a lot today. I'm at the point where I just want to take the makeup off, take all the jewellery off, get into comfy clothes, generally look a mess. <laughs> I'm at that point, but yes. So I'm going to cozy up and do exactly that. <laughs> If you are looking at this and thinking, Ashley, you do not look your finest right now. Don't you worry, my love, I am well aware. Whatever flare up for my body fancies having this weekend is just making me super sleepy and I'm not spending energy on things that don't require it. Well, I am because I'm doing a lot of things today. My appearance, not one of them. That, however, does not matter. What does matter is the fact that I finished reading The Burn Houses. So, I ended up rating this one 3.5 stars and this was a very solid four star for me for most of it because this proved to be a really enjoyable read. I fell into this so easily. There's something about the writing style which just flowed really smoothly, seemed really natural. All of the dialogue between the characters was really easy while also being entertaining. And it was just one of those books where every single time I picked it up, I would fall back into it, no problem. But then as I kept reading, there were more and more things that made it seem not quite so naturally easy because there were some instances confused me slightly. Not because it was confusing in the sense that I didn't know what was going on, but in the sense that it was so contradictory how the characters figured things out that I didn't really get it. I was just like, okay, so for instance, there's two main characters in this book and for the most part we're following them on this journey. Now, at one point in this book there is a chapter where we kind of break away from the story and visit the backstory of one of said characters. Then in the following chapter this said character asks a question and in the context that they're in, completely normal question. And then the other character who he had asked the question to takes this question and apparently finds this whole profound meaning in the tone of their voice, which then allows them to figure out more of their backstory. Bearing in mind this is the backstory that we've just read. And I just read it and thought, you didn't figure that out. It was very much a case where the author needed this detail given. We were provided with the backstory and then it just seemed as if the author didn't know how to put it into the current timeline and so this like metaphorical meaning was squeezed out of the sentence and I was just like, no. That's, that's not how, no. <laughs> so I read that and was just kind of like, okay. But then further on in the story, there are two other things revealed in the plot, which aren't necessarily plot twists, but they are big kind of momentum changing moments. And <laughs> they're both really obvious, but apparently every single character just didn't see it. 
at all. And fair enough, you might not see it if you're just in that situation yourself. But the thing is, they were basing a lot of their knowledge on the stories that they'd been told. And one of them was the biggest like plot hole within a story that would have given them a hint that I've literally ever seen. And it took them ages to figure it out. And I'm sat here just like, the answer is there. <laughs> and this is coming from somebody who doesn't figure out what's going on. Like I just don't see things coming at all. I don't even try. I'm really bad at spotting small details that would give a hint to what's going to happen in the future and all the foreshadowing and everything. I'm so bad at seeing that. And yet I saw everything in this book. <laughs> now bear in mind, I'm not placing that as a direct criticism because I feel like with this being based on kind of folkloric atmospheres and it's very much a kind of old story vibe. That style of writing, those styles of narrative are all the sort where you do know how it's ultimately going to end because it's an old story. It's a tale as old as time. I'm not seeing that as a criticism because it was still enjoyable even though you could guess pretty much where it was going. But the reason why I'm pointing it out is because, as I said earlier, one thing was figured out via profound meaning that didn't actually make sense versus the glaringly obvious thing just completely going over everybody's head. So I was just reading it and thinking, how can you see one thing and not the other? Like, it was just really inconsistent. <laughs> there were also some other questionable things in this, such as one of the main characters being a goat. And that was the sort of thing where I'm just like, I feel like this is being random just for the sake of being random. But even despite all of that, I did still really enjoy this book. I do feel like this is a really good one to read in autumn because the folkloric feel to it is definitely strong and it's always something that I associate with like dark woodland and that pervading sense of uncertain magic is definitely within this book. So I would definitely recommend it. I do think it's a really quick, fun, light read, <laughs> which I always say that books that have really dark topics are actually light reads and I wonder if anybody's just going to start questioning my entire mental stability at this point, but it is a light read. Even though you have things like grave digging and death as the entire theme of this book, it's just completely normal for this main character so it's not really like dark and gruesome as you would expect it to because she's just like dead body. So yes, I did really enjoy this one. I am going to be making some more notes on this tonight because I need to make some notes for my Patreon video which I'll be doing for this because my Patreon videos are always spoilery reviews of the book club book and then also updates on upcoming plans and stuff and a little behind the scenes of what I've got upcoming. But the one for this one won't be until October so I need to make some notes so that when I come to actually film that I don't forget everything that I wanted to say. I did realise however that I told you on a Friday or something that I have books that were sent to me by publishers and then I never showed you them. So I'm going to do that right now. They're all short and sweet books, which is really quite nice. So the first one is this one, which is Jewish Folk Tales in Britain and Ireland by Liz Berg. Way back earlier this year, I was actually sent one from the same publisher, which is another folk tale related one, and that one was Animal Folk Tales. And this publisher has a whole series of folklore related books like this. They are very kindly sending me a few of. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be sent a Woodland one as well, which I'm so excited for. But this is the most recent one. And I am actually currently reading this. I'm only 40 pages in, so I haven't read too much so far. But it's proven to be really interesting because I don't know anything about this area of folklore. So far from the 40 pages that I've read, it seems that all of the stories are paired with a kind of historical background. Just a paragraph or so explaining where the story came from. I will say it could do with being structured a little bit differently in terms of how it's presented on the page because I only realised because of the general tone of the writing changing because we do have page breaks between. So for instance, we have one here. This is an actual folklore story and then this underneath it is going back to the historical background of the next story so I didn't realise, I didn't know if this was a continuation of one thing until I realised that it had just completely switched topic. It's not like it took me too long to figure out, it literally took me a sentence but I do just think because the rest of it is really clearly indicated, like we have the title of each story, I feel like it could do with being separated a little bit more in terms of that but it's not really a hindrance at all, it's very clear when the story changes tone. <laughs> but it's proven to be really interesting so far, especially because there are so many common like fairy tale motifs all the way through it and themes that you recognise from other stories and really well-known fairy tales. It's really interesting to see the similarities but also the differences and just, I don't know. I find it really interesting as well seeing which city they're associated with because 
it's almost just like creating a folklore map in my head. It's making the stories almost feel more legitimate in my head and like if I went to this place I'd be able to find some trace of it. I'm really enjoying this so far, you're likely to see me reading it more through next week's reading vlog. And then I do also have these two little books which are tiny but these sound fascinating. So these are new editions of books by Gallic Books and there's a mini series of sorts which are specifically about revolutionary women. So these books are written by French women who did really extraordinary work and kind of went under the radar and they wrote incredible work which just needs more appreciation so they've actually translated it into English or republished editions which already existed to bring them back into the limelight a little bit and one, I love these covers so much. There is actually going to be a third one as well. So I can't wait to get my hands on that one. But these ones, they just sound so good. We have this one, which is The Woman and the Wolf and Other Stories by Renee Vivian. The author was actually a high profile lesbian poet who specialized in queer and feminist myth and folklore retellings. So can you see why my interest was perked? Because hello. <laughs> really, really intrigued to see what she did with the stories because you know I'm a sucker for a retelling. And it says on the back, blending myth, fairy story and biblical tale, Vivian creates powerful portraits of strong women who stand up for what they believe in and of the aggrieved men who trail behind them. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So excited to read this one. And then we also have Three Rival Sisters and the author behind this one is just known for being a trailblazing feminist. I'm gonna go live in the countryside, I swear. As I was saying, she was actually an activist who called for the reformation of divorce laws. This is actually the first English translation of her work. On the back it says that the title story tells the tale of Henriette, René and Gabrielle as they compete for the affections of one man, only to learn that marriage and happiness are not the same thing. There's also a story called An Atonement, which sees a man awaken to find his wife dead, freeing him to marry the woman he loves, but haunted by the possibility that he may have been her killer. How can you not know? So I just think these two books sound incredible. They're released in November. I'm really excited for the third book as well, which comes out in December. And I just think this is such a wonderful little series of books. And I've been wanting to read more translated fiction. So I think these are a wonderful addition to my shelves. So, so thank you to the publishers of all of these for sending them my way. They just sound delightful. But right now I'm going to go and do an Instagram photo shoot, film some reels probably have a coffee in the process because coffee. <laughs> So this is what happened. <laughs> I just have one giant cookie, essentially. Okay, well, that was a disaster. <laughs> Even if they didn't all merge into one, I've just tried it and it just tastes like egg and salt. I'm confused, I'm so confused. Like I, I checked the ingredients again to make sure I'd put in the right measurements and I have. I checked back my footage because I did vlog the entire thing and saw that I'd done it all right so <laughs> apparently I just don't like that recipe anyway. I tried it and I was just like mm. and then I left it a few minutes and I convinced myself that it wasn't actually that bad so I tried it again and I was like mm. baking was not a success it was my first time doing it by myself and I'm not even that big of a fan of cookies I just thought they'd be easy to make <laughs> oh how wrong was I never mind never mind I shall continue my baking endeavors some of the time. It's half past eight in the evening. I should be making thumbnails, but I just don't want to. I should be editing this video though, so I'm going to jump in the shower and then start editing this vlog. So I'm going to end on that disastrous note. <laughs>
Because <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be reading too much more this evening that will merit me giving an update or anything. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to leave a like and a comment to let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please consider doing so. Down in the description box, you'll find information to everything I've just mentioned in this video. All of my social media and other bookish stuff as well. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now, I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye.